Hoi there, it's me, Painhead. I haven't been able to properly use my right hand since June. I know I usually disappear off the internet anyway, but this time it was for reasons completely out of my control, and unrelated to me being a dysfunctional mess of a content creator. Envision a wingless bird, a stingless bee, a blind assassin, a child in a loving and functional two-parent household. These are things that just don't make sense in the real world. It's just a mockery of their place in existence. What I'm trying to say is, I've been a joke for the past several weeks, and not being able to work has made my bank account balance into a convenient punchline. The issue being, I definitely couldn't punch anything with this hand without feeling it in my wrist for the next several weeks. I'm very far behind schedule right now. This footage is from March of this year. That's a good five months ago, and I'm here trying to piece together whatever the hell this video is. This adorable elephant-footed creature is Yashiro Nene. You can find her at Kamome Academy's high school division as a first-year high school student. My lovely patrons had the pleasure of picking between four mostly copyrighted characters for me to make a fan model of. That being Roxy from FNAF, Bruno from Encanto, Nene from Toilet Bound Hanakokun, or Ilulu from Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid Season 2. Did they make the right choice? Well, too bad. If you wanted to have an opinion, you should have stuck your nose in it five months ago, and not now when I've already finished the model and made a video. Who raised you? Getting into the main bulk of the video. For those of you that are still here, there's always been this weird relationship that people have regarding taking advantage of another person's or company's copyrighted character to benefit from it in some way. Because that's what it comes down to when it comes to legalities. Whether we like or dislike these characters, expressing that through art or other means, using their names to attract those who also share a similar like or dislike of the character, is a very good way to beckon people's eyes towards you. It's on a similar ground to talking about how famous person A abused famous person B in secret, and famous person B is finally speaking out for themselves. You know how much views famous people generate, and this is in the same field. I'm not incorrect to say that this kind of forced involvement in something that has already got a face or name for themselves in the public eye is inherently exploitative. Would you make fan art that not only doesn't anywhere abuse the copyrighted name of the thing or character in question, but also transformatively alters the work in a way that doesn't abuse the copyrighted design? Just so you don't infringe on someone else's work, you know? Because I definitely wouldn't and neither would 69% of artists. Sources, trust me bro. Fun fact, I've actually been in jail this whole time for this very reason. If you think I'm lying, ask your mother. She visits me often. I found an article in Princeton.com all about selling a fan art. I'll link it below. If I make a Teletubby fan art, I'm going to put Teletubby in the title so the fans can find it. But who else can find it if they deem you enough of a threat? There's the corporations who might not always appreciate what you are doing with their characters. You can technically get away with selling fan art online, but it's a very thin thread to walk. Your safest bet is to buy some kind of rights to allow you some more freedoms and less worries. But that is far more easier said than done. Can you afford the rights to a billion dollar character? Because I can't. Give me a few more months without commissions and I won't be able to afford chewing gum. The basic law is that Whoever holds the copyright to a certain thing has the sole right to make and sell derivative works. Soul is in the one and only. Going back to being transformative, making people think you're officially collaborating with the original copyright holders is a big no 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 ah. The more different you make stuff from the original, the better position you will be in. It's not like the moment you draw a Simpsons character, the FBI will break into your house, of course. On a daily basis, so many people make money off things they shouldn't for years before being busted, or maybe they just never do. Just tread gently so you don't get caught in the crossfire. If you're making fan art for profit, then know that you could be asked to stop or be sued for copyright or trademark infringement. I know for a fact that if I'm making fan models, my goal is not to make something transformative, outside of making 2D things 3D. In fact, the more like the original character it is, the more smug I am, because it doesn't take a genius to know that some 2D characters look like Hellspawn from certain angles, especially if they're in the background of an image. A 3D vessel is the perfect defense against demonic interference. 
Except for me, of course. Because why would you want to stop me from interfering? I know of someone who made a fan model of Hayase Nagatoro and tried to sell her on Booth. If you know, you know. Anyway, it probably lasted a few days to a week before it got claimed and forcefully taken down by the copyright holders. Luckily, it didn't go further than that. These kinds of things alone is why I would never advise people to sell fan models unless they're very transformative and fit into the fair use category. You know how it is. But I can still give them away, right? If I'm not selling. If people pay to get into a room where I give out free stuff, does it count as selling those items? Well, hopefully not, because I make fan models available to patrons as well as other models I make. Hopefully that logic stands strong if I ever end up getting summoned into a courtroom. I mean, who wouldn't want to see Nene in 3D? I don't want to keep it to myself, and it's not like you have to pay to get a hold of it. Whenever I have my life put together, I upload this kind of stuff to VRChat too, and that's super free. Who knows, maybe I will end up going to jail. Speaking of jail, I'd like to say something about my last video. I made a little bit of an oopsie doopsie. Before you think I'm going to apologise, I'd like to ask you to take a step away from the computer or phone, go to the closest mirror and find it deep within yourself to lower your expectations of me. There was a few very five-head, big-brained comments, that, that's a compliment by the way, on that video that said a little something to me. Not about concept art, but about Windows Inc. Now I have no idea what that is, and I still don't but I was complaining about the new XB pen tablet giving me lag, specifically in Blender. So edit, preferences, input, and then switching the tablet API to Windows Ink when it was originally in automatic. This completely eradicated the lag issue I was having. I'd like to say thank you to the big nerds that figured that out. I've never drawn lines faster in Blender. I have so much free time now to get bitches. Thank you very much. I guess Blender just doesn't recognize some tablets and I got unlucky. Cause after trying to Google the issue myself and figure something out, I couldn't. So complaining on YouTube was a good thing and solved my problem. <laughs> Anyone who commented that, I will personally allow you the privilege of giving me your mum's number so you too can be a victim of my mother's stealing crimes. I will bake cookies with her and allow you to take the crumbs from the baking tray as a souvenir. To be completely honest, I don't remember the anime toilet bound Hanako-kun too well, but I did give it a 9 on Mal, which means it must have been good. I know if we ever get a season 2, I'll certainly be watching it, even though I tend to pretend season 2s don't exist since I want to watch more of less, if you know what I mean. I'd never watch Naruto, for example, even though I tried my darn best to do so as a secondary schooler, only to give up before 100 episodes. I found this show through Discord GIFs, which is honestly how I find most new anime these days. Is it just me or is my weebly just that unmatched? The first thing that stood out to me was of course the line work, which I tried my best to incorporate into the 3D model, and those chunky stompers. If you've ever seen me draw chibis, you'll know I do the same thing with my characters. The chunkier the hands and feet or calves, the better. I just find it to be a cute style. The synopsis on Mal reads, The famous seven wonders that every school seems to have are a staple of Japanese urban legends. One of the most well-known of these tales is that of Hanako-san, the ghost of a young girl who haunts the school's bathrooms. Kamome Academy has its own version of Hanako-san's legend. Rumours claim that if one successfully manages to summon Hanako-san, she will grant her summoner any wish. Led by the gossip, many people have tried to call upon her, yet every attempt has failed. However, when Nene Yashiro, a girl hoping for a romantic fortune, dares to summon Hanako-san, she discovers that the rumoured girl is actually a boy. After a series of unfortunate events involving Nene's romantic desires, she is unwillingly entangled in a world of the supernatural, becoming Hanako-san's assistant. She finds out about Hanako-kun's lesser known duty, maintaining the fragile balance between mortals and apparitions. The three S's in synopsis stands for super surface level stuff, that's 
Super inopsifla, si lovely stuff if you want to sound smart. The anime goes into so many things. There are so many worlds and stories and characters that you would never suspect. And it's all very entertaining and exciting to watch it all evolve as the episodes progress. I would certainly recommend it. Where else are you going to find these ravishing Diagon calves? Except for probably 50% of art styles from people born after 95. When it came to making Nene and Blender, I was very happy not to have to worry about getting her toes right. As much as it is nice to give models some more of a base for customizability, I don't go all out with fan models unless I really want to be extra. I don't think that many people want to mess with them at this current moment in time anyway. I'd be more inclined to believe people would rather have clown outfits to put on their models for fun instead. I really put the extra effort into trying to make topology flow as smoothly as possible. For that, I always abuse subdivision subsurface. Doing half the work I would originally have to do to get a similar result is always a great idea in my books. If only I could make half a model and get paid the same amount. I have a big history of using curves all the way to the sculpt. Even my current model has a lot of this. For Nene, I don't think I used a single curve, correct me if I'm wrong, and by curve I mean those clever lines you can add dimension to, bezier curves. This just resulted in a very smooth transition from roots to hair strands. For the longest time, I never worried about how the model would look in realistic lighting, but now I'm always going out of my way to make sure it looks good with tune shading and standard. It doesn't mean a lot in practice, but it's definitely a nice addition for those stubborn VRChat worlds with the weird lighting. As you can see, this model has outlines. This is usually achieved with a shader, but when it comes to the face, you really want to avoid shaders if the line art is on the thicker side of things. This is because it can very quickly start making the face holes look very odd and thick in a bad way. It very much exposes any lack of smooth deformation skills you may have when it comes to sh smooshing the face and eyes for blind shapes. You can actually duplicate the mash, give it a solid colour, scale it up and flip the normals. This will give you a manual outline effect you can play with, and you can even google tutorials for it on YouTube. How to make outlines with 3D models. I would avoid doing this kind of thing though until after you've made all the vicings, just in case the lines need to move more than you originally thought. To save the face from looking dodgy, simply cut the face off. And don't say it in a more technical way either. Scaring your FBI agent is the intention and not something you are trying to avoid. The eyes, nose, mouth, and eyebrow region are not necessary to keep the outline effect on this flip normal mesh. As long as the jaw area has it, it won't make the model look any worse. Sculpting tools are great for making specific areas thinner and thicker with the inflate or deflate tool, just like it looks in the anime. I'm not going to say it's a one-to-one -one perfect match as far as outlines go, but I did what I could do. For emotes, I took a lot of screenshots from the anime, but also just little expressions from fan artworks on Google. There was a lot of expressions I wanted to make for her, but I think the amount I gave her was already over the top for a potentially free model. On a positive note, I really wanted to make this model. So I didn't mind going poor for the queen. Not not Elizabeth. Nene. Nene Yashiro, the queen. She makes a lot of cute faces and they can look very exaggerated compared to the default face, but gladly it didn't mess up my shape keys too much, even though I was kind of worried about it. The one especially that was very odd looking was the tears and the heart's lovey face. I don't believe the tears are actually part of the eye, they're a different mesh. And the eyes are a very odd arrow shape. I had to stop before I got carried away. There was always the possibility for more blushies derpiness, tears, but someone had to put an end to my madness. Emotes are always fun. I believe the little skull brooch was slightly the wrong shape, but I'm not mad about it. The UV unwrap is always a headache to get perfectly, 
as you can see from the penetrosity going on with the hands. My favourite part was probably the colours. I was going to go all out and make it dynamic shading, you know, that moves with the lighting, but I figured I didn't make nearly enough to worry about subtle things like that. I have a very unhealthy history of cell shading. I actually hate it with passion, because I'm terrible at it. The only reason I could do this is because I had a lot of cool references to follow, and I wasn't relying on my own abilities entirely. I think it turned out pretty well, and I'm quite proud to say I think I did 2D Nona justice. Anyone who thinks otherwise I would like to not so kindly invite to a duel to the death. If you want this model, you can find it on VRChat, potentially, maybe. Or my Patreon. Fun models are always available at any tier. Speaking of Patreons, it's very nice knowing that being dead for two months doesn't immediately make them all run away to a more kind and attentive demon. I even got some new people on the Patreon train. Big thank you to Joanne Seal, Kelly Miller, Johnny McKeon, Uncomfortable, Adol, and Blackberry. Biggest thank yous to Eo Hee Haw and Spud the Cat for being the grey up above that we all need but don't deserve. Especially you. Thanks for watching, Jailbirds. Farewell. I was born with glass bones and paper skin. Every morning I break my legs and every afternoon I break my arms. At night I lay awake in agony until my heart attacks put me to sleep.